Hi, I'm Kim Skates, Membership Relations Manager at Central Houston. Thank you for joining us for this member profile today. I am super excited to be talking to Doug Hall, General Manager at the Toyota Center. Doug started his career at the Toyota Center and then went off to do some really impressive things in sports. He was Executive Vice President for the Houston Super Bowl Committee, President and CEO of the Houston Final Four Organizing Committee, General Manager of BBVA Compass Stadium, and now he is back. He knows sports, and as we know, sports has had kind of a crazy year. So, um, Doug, tell us a little bit about it. Let's start with your role at Toyota Center. Well, the Toyota Center is managed by the Houston Rockets. Uh, we have an arm called Clutch City Sports and Entertainment, but uh, essentially that means we operate the arena. And so being part of the Rockets family is a great opportunity for a facility manager. You know, you really have one voice and one entity and so uh, we feel like that's the best way to run a facility very similar to what uh, the Astros do at Minute Maid Park and BBVA uh, Stadium in Houston Dynamo so it's a great setup great opportunity here and we love doing things in downtown and we just wish we were busier but we're getting that way soon and so we're excited to have fans back here in a couple of weeks uh, right around Christmas time. So last year the NBA was out of town, they were in the bubble. Do you remember where you were when you heard that they were making that decision and how you felt about it? Well, the, the big decision started back in March, right? When the rodeo canceled, that was a, a real alarm bell. I think most of us felt like uh, COVID was not going to be the pandemic it has turned out to be, right? We thought it was maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months. We were set to host the NCAA men's basketball regionals, you know, later in two weeks, uh, you know, kind of end of March and March 12th, I think was kind of D-Day, if you will. So we postponed the NBA season in March and kind of through April, we thought maybe it would come back. And then it became pretty evident uh, as everybody saw the pandemic was going to be with us for a while. And so really when the teams, when the NBA moved the teams to the bubble, that was great for the league and great for the Rockets uh, because they were going to at least get to continue. We were not going to be able to host events here. And so, you know, we went through some no fans scenario, but moving to the bubble was a great move for the league. And, you know, uh, to do it successfully, the league deserves a lot of credit. You know, the Toyota Center and the rest of the facilities, you know, um, didn't get to enjoy hosting events. But again, it was great to see the NBA come through it. And so, you know, uh, so it was disappointing not to host games, but again, you know, it's the world we're living in. We're all living uh, different types of dif disappointments and how do you move on? So it was a great resolution, but we're excited to host fans again, as I said here in a couple of weeks, really uh, there's, you know, 30 NBA teams, only five teams are going to host fans starting in December. I mean, many cities and states, as you well know, are not allowing public gatherings. And so even at a limited capacity, we feel fortunate to get people back into the building and to see our product live. And, you know, we have our fingers crossed, obviously that could change uh, any day now, uh, but we don't anticipate it to change and we're ready. We will be ready uh, for preseason games next week. And then uh, starting hosting fans on the 23rd and 31st of December. And so what can fans expect when they come down for a game? Very safe environment. I mean, we are going to be maximum capacity of 25%, uh, probably a little bit under under that. Um, so six foot social distancing, mask in place, you know, health questionnaires when you come into the building. Um, all of our concession stands will be open throughout the building, even with, you know, only 25% uh, capacity because we want to be able to spread out the fans. Uh, you will not have anybody sitting next to you that's not in your party. You know, uh, each row will have a maximum of two groups and either twos, fours, or sixes. You know, you won't have to step over anybody to get to an aisle and to get up to the concession stands. You know, uh, we'll have the distancing, um, you know, locations out. And so, um, and plenty of, uh, you know, hand sanitizers and all the things we're seeing at every other facility and grocery store that's opened up, but, uh, but we think we'll be one of the safest uh, public environments uh, out there, and uh, we, feel, we feel good about our plan. That's great. I know fans are going to love it. It'll be good to be back and see it live. Yeah, it's going to be great to see it live. You know, been to a couple of the NFL games and the the Dynamo games as well. And it's not it's not quite the same environment with a maximum of twenty five percent, right? And that's uh, 
that's uh, but that's the world we're living in now. We have to get used to that. And as I say, we can't get to 100% until we get to 25% and then 50% and then, you know, and work our way back up. I mean, even when the, you know, the pandemic is over and there's a vaccine out there, we know it's going to ramp up slowly. It's not going to come back to the way it was immediately. Um, but we have to get started somewhere. And no, uh, December 23rd is the time for us. So we're, we're happy about that. So this fall, the Toyota Center found um, a new purpose. Tell us about the venue becoming a voting location. You know, it was great. Um, we've Voting has been an NBA initiative and a Rockets initiative for, for many years. Clearly, this election had a lot more focus on it for a lot of reasons outside of, you know, uh, what we're doing here. But uh, we had the dates available, which you know, we, we did uh, early voting, which was three weeks, as well as uh, election day voting. And so we would have never had in a typical world, you know, three days uh, of no events is a big gap for us. So to have three weeks like we did this year was a great opportunity for us to be, you know, part uh, partner with the the, uh, the county, you know, and the city and to, uh, to do our part. And, you know, we had a lot of people uh, come up and vote and our drive-through voting. We were one of nine locations that did drive-through voting, the only one on election day. That was a huge success. Uh, I was skeptical that people would want to do that, but certainly it was a, it was a big win. And uh, here and uh, good partners at Houston First that operate the garage that, you know, partnered with us to make that happen. So anyway, it was fun to do. All of our staff volunteered uh, throughout instead of uh, we didn't uh, pay people to, to come in and work the election sites. You know, we all of our staff volunteered to you, be direction giver, givers and work in the garage and, you know, um, for three straight weeks, that was a lot. And if you've never worked an election, you know, in early voting, it's a lot of work. And so the election clerks and people that do that uh, for 18 hour days, three straight weeks, uh, kudos to them. We did a small part in that. So, and it was fun. Congratulations. That's really neat. So the other big thing at Toyota Center are the shows. I know so many people missing concerts right now. What can people expect? Who's coming and when? Well, we had a lot of shows scheduled in uh, March to, uh, it's funny, everybody that was kind of in March, April, May rescheduled to the fall thinking it would be over. And then, you know, kind of the fall started, so well, first of next year. And uh, really we don't anticipate uh, live shows probably until uh, July, August, September of next year. I mean, uh, we've got a couple on the books that have not push beyond that yet, but uh, based on kind of way the vaccine looks and the pandemic is kind of shaken out, you know, the music industry takes a while to ramp up. You just don't click your fingers and a, a rock show goes on the road. And so it's going to take a while. And I think they're anxious to see, you know, the NBA and NHL, you know, come back to 25 and 30 and 40 percent, you know, uh, to prove that it's a safe environment for fans. And so, um, so we're hoping by the, you know, late summer that uh, that world will come back because we miss it. Uh, we miss seeing people in the building. We miss the events. Uh, again, the energy of, uh, and the camaraderie. I mean, you miss that uh, in this safe environment. It's hard to get that sense of, you know, kind of energy and passion uh, when you're six feet apart, right? And so that'll come back and people will enjoy it that much more. It's gonna take uh, a couple more months, so uh, is our prediction. So that James Taylor show for May, it's probably gonna <laughs> get pushed again. <laughs> it's it's the only show we still have in uh, in the first half of the year. And so I would, uh, I think it would like will likely get pushed. You know, we've got backup dates. So if it does get pushed, uh, we can do that. You know, it, that's a real possibility. That's late enough in the season, you know, in, in the springtime that maybe it happens. I saw the rodeo just announced they moved their March dates to May, which makes a lot of sense because, I mean, there's still there's still a possibility that it could go through. And so we'd like that. But, uh, you know, we we've waited a long time. We want to get it right at this point. Right. Uh, no sense rushing into things until, again, people feel safe because you can host events, you know, uh, but. Um, you know, again, people want the, the live experience. We want to do it right. And so, again, we've waited a long time. Yeah, another month uh, or two to get it right is uh, not a problem for us. We're, we're going to be here when music comes back, that's for sure. So we are just a few weeks away from the end of the year, which sounds so bizarre to even say out loud. Um, what's on your to-do list for the rest of the month? What do you need to accomplish to make December feel like a success? 
Well, our list changes daily um, because uh, we've got a lot of protocols. Uh, as, as we were talking about, the NBA and the bubble learned a lot of things. And so they've taken that bubble experience and kind of pushed it back into the facilities. But, you know, a bubble is one environment where it's tightly controlled. This is a much harder uh harder environment to control a lot of game day staff and part-time staff were doing testing you know uh, on them what type of testing how many days what quantity um, how many people are inside you know or close to the players how many people are far away from the players how are we doing concession stands so you know honestly we've been working on this since the pandemic started but now it's really getting there so uh, my list is a couple hundred to-do list is a couple hundred things long right now uh, but we'll get there and we've got a great team working on it and uh you know, we've had uh, uh, good experience watching the Texans and NRG Stadium folks uh, bring this back, and same thing with the Dynamo. So we'll get this, uh, we'll get this done, and uh, we'll get it open. And uh, we're excited to have fans back. So through it all, tell us one thing that you've learned this year. Well, every day is unpredictable in this world. I mean, I think uh, you know the like most people, um, you know, our world's been touched by people that have passed away, you know, from this disease. And so, you know, certainly not take anything for granted, you know, on the work, on the work front, I think, you know, we've kind of, uh, as I said, we've been working on this for a while, but and this is one situation where we, you know, working too far ahead doesn't really help you. You want to, you, you don't want to kind of keep pace with the with the things uh, that are coming because the world changes every day, right? Uh, different protocols come out, different knowledge comes out. So, you know, you re we remember when masks were not, re uh, were they, they recommended not wearing masks, right? And now it's the other way around and rightfully so, just like anything else we learn and uh, the disease has become, you know, uh, easier to track. And when it first started, don't touch anything, everybody wear gloves and that's become much less, right? It's all viral now. So anyway, so we've, you know, tried to encourage our staff not to work too far ahead because uh, if you get too far ahead, you're going to end up redoing what you did. So, but, uh, but you can't get behind either because it changes uh, quickly. So anyway, that's a long winded answer to, uh, you know, keep pace with the, keep pace with the uh, uh, pandemic uh, and uh, keep your eyes on, on the prize. Nice. Nice. Um, before we go, tell us one thing that you really love about downtown Houston. You know, I love what I miss right now, which is the energy of downtown. I miss traffic downtown. I miss, you know, hosting events. I miss people walking up to the building, coming out of restaurants and bars. And uh, I miss, uh, you know, um, Discovery Green being full of people, you know, working on the Super Bowl and the Final Fours. I mean, I don't think there's a better feeling than see Discovery Green, all the streets around it, the convention center bursting with life and, uh, you know, the light rail running and people hopping on and off. I mean, it's, uh, uh, those are great events because you really see downtown alive and that's certainly missing right now. I miss watching uh, kids play basketball over at Root Park, right, you know, uh, and so anyway, that's uh, like everybody else. I want to see people busy and smiling and not long faces uh, and, uh, or behind masks even, right, you know, it's a, uh, it's hard to see people smile behind masks. And so I miss that. Uh, that's the other thing I've learned, how hard it is to communicate, you know, behind a mask, right? Um, you can't see everything in the eyes. You can't, I've stopped telling jokes because I like to, I like to make jokes uh, or lighthearted comments and then smile and people can tell you're joking. But, you know, I kind of said, well, I need to stop doing that because <laughs> we might be taken the wrong way. So anyway, I'm looking forward to everybody getting their masks off and coming in and smiling when Elton John takes the stage or, um, you know, uh, one of the other great artists of player. Any uh, NBA season predictions you want to make? Well, it'll be unpredictable. I mean, I don't know. Um, you know, I would, I'm cautiously optimistic. You've seen the NFLs and college football has had, you know, a lot of uh, cancellation and schedule changes. You know, I'm optimistic with the amount of protocols that we've got in place that maybe we'll, uh, we'll dodge that, but, you know, making predictions and, in the sports world is tough, particularly in the pandemic sports world. So um, that uh, I know one thing, we'll be open on uh, December 23 and uh, looking forward to seeing fans. That's, that's probably the only thing uh, I can predict. There you go. Thank you. It's been really great to visit with you. And thank you all for joining us today for our Central Houston member profile. We will look forward to seeing you guys all downtown. Go Rockets. Bye.